Welcome to NTA Nationwide. I am Miriam Akbata. Member states of the Economic Community of West African States, ECWAS, have resolved to take far-reaching measures towards creating the right conditions for sustainable economic growth and development in the sub-region. These are in the areas of good governance, fight against corruption, combating terrorism, as well as organized crimes by deepening and strengthening relevant institutions, Chairman of the Institute of the Commission, President Mohamed Buhari, stated this at a high-level dialogue between Chinese and African leaders, as well as business representatives in Beijing. State House correspondent Adam Sambu reports. The high-level dialogue, which featured contributions by representatives of the various sub-regions of the African continent, was an opportunity for the Chinese leader Xi Jinping to once again promote his country's Belt and Road Initiative. BRI, as it is called, is a creative endeavor that seeks to tap into China's industrial strength to meet the needs of African countries, especially in the development of infrastructure, industrial parks, human resources, and technical training. China's investment in Africa comes with no political strings attached. China does not interfere in Africa's internal affairs and does not impose its own will on Africa. What we value is the sharing of development experience and the support we could offer to Africa's national rejuvenation and prosperity. China-Africa cooperation under the BRI is a way of open and inclusive cooperation that will help African enterprises and businesses better integrate into the global value chains and facilitate Africa's industrialization and modernization. Speaking on behalf of ECOWAS, which he chairs, President Muhammad Buhari expressed appreciation of member states for China's increasing investment in the sub-region aimed at building a prosperous and shared future. China is today the largest investor in the sub-region in both the private and public sectors covering areas such as infrastructure, energy, agriculture, mining, and healthcare. China also provides significant assistance in emergency humanitarian aid and response to climate change. The president said various projects are now ongoing in the sub-region, including railways, power infrastructure, airports, and numerous routes through Chinese financing. The Nigerian leader was, however, emphatic that while China's help is vital, the main push to transform the economies of the sub-region must come from genuine efforts and commitment by member states. ECOWAS member states will continue to pay emphasis on encouraging more foreign direct investment in the sub-region. To this end, member states are looking at the opportunities that the China International Import-Export Initiative will offer our exporters to gain market access for their goods and services in China. Such an opportunity will help to diversify the economy of our sub-region from over-reliance on primary agricultural and mineral products and subsequently correct the huge trade imbalance between China and the ECO sub-region on a win-win basis for both parties. We would also request visa facilitation for our businessmen and women and students who seek to visit China. The West African sub-region, President Buhari said, is also endowed with numerous tourism potentials and therefore made a case for support by the Chinese government towards developing tourism-related infrastructure to empower the citizens, create more job opportunities, and eliminate poverty. From Beijing, Adam Musambu, NTA News. While African and Chinese leaders were busy at the opening of the 2018 summit of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, some Nigerians and Chinese businessmen were taking advantage of the event to sign some memorandum of understanding and agreements on some projects to be implemented in Nigeria. Makut Simon Macham reports.
Business activities between Nigeria and China have continued to grow even as China makes more inroads into Africa and Nigeria in particular. At the Nigerian Embassy in Beijing, these Nigerian and Chinese businessmen are crossing the T's and dotting the I's on some projects to be executed in Nigeria. Edo State Government is partnering Chinese investors for development of Benin River Port, Industrial Park and Modular Refinery. So the Benin River Port is going to be a sister port to the Lekki Dipsy Port and we expect that up to 30% of the cargo going to the Lekki Dipsy Port will be meant for the Benin River Port. Another Nigerian business group is developing an offline online business clearinghouse that will connect Chinese and Nigerian businessmen under one roof. There's a need to ease interactions and um, linkages between uh, businesses. That's exactly what we're trying to do. We can help them to export to China with our platform. So we're not just online, but also, for example, what is offline, we have to show law for the products from Nigeria. All these agreements are signed under the watch of Nigeria's Deputy Head of Mission to China, Ambassador Bakori Ali Usman, and the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission, Yewande Sadiku. The imbalance of trade is always against us. Why? Because we don't sell much to China. We always buy from China, we don't sell much to China. We sign up these private sectors now. We expected certain of our goods to be coming from Nigeria to China. While these agreements were being signed between Nigerian investors and their Chinese counterparts, the Chinese government at the opening of FOCAC 2018 announced that $60 billion will be made available to African countries for various development projects. This therefore means that the relations between Nigeria and China would only get deeper. From Beijing in China, Makut Simon Macham, NT News. To highlight the potentials of the leather industry in Nigeria as part of the ongoing quest for economic diversification, guests on Good Morning Nigeria have advocated ratification of a draft policy to give the leather industry an implementable roadmap. roadmap. Lydia Samson has a report. Though heights and skin business booms in northern parts of Nigeria, the country is yet to boast of dominance and value addition in finished leather products. Gaston Good Morning Nigeria recalled how organized and viable the leather industry was in the past and listed steps to revive the industry to include acquisition of state-of-the-art machinery, training of human resource across the value chain, and the reactivation of dormant tanneries. We are now processing no less than 45 million skins. I didn't say hide, I said skins. Because the major base of Nigerian industry is on skin, not on hide, for two reasons. First, our hide, though might be good, but the tanning of the animal doesn't allow production of very good hide for tanning. Secondly, a large amount of it is eaten as per more. The leather industry can be the second largest foreign exchange area for Nigeria if well uh, uh, harnessed. And uh, talking about footwear, uh, Nigeria produces about 1.6 million pairs of shoes. And we spend about $300 million to import leather finished goods. Now you can see the disparity. If you are talking about the real development of the sector, you know, you have to spread the incentives. But if the incentive is concentrated at, we know, what level, everybody, you know, will just key into that. They describe challenges faced from raw production to finished leather works as avoidable. We have technology of producing our gum, the gum we use in producing our shoes. We have technology of producing bed powder. We have the technology of producing the, 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 uh, the, the, um, the lime. Now, if we continue to import lime, that means that we will be killing our own industry. In this area, you know, we collaborate with these agencies in, in, in a view to find out, to address this issue, particularly the issue of raw material. Our council welcomes proposal from all Nigerians. Today, China almost uh, is producing for Nigeria in almost every sort of uh, the economy. And uh, this will not go down well. So I believe uh, the government should, you know, look at distance and uh, be able to come out with uh, a policy you know, to uh, make sure that we we'll sustain these industries uh, for the betterment of uh, Nigerians. 
the guests who decried the nation's overdependence on oil to the detriment of other thriving industries were, however, optimistic that if properly harnessed, the leather industry will not only boost foreign exchange earnings but create massive employment for the teeming population. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTU News. About 5,000 people are to benefit from the next round of the National Cost Transfer Program of the federal government in Benue State. This came to light at the workshop for facilitators in Makudi. Charles Abba reports. The federal government has continued to demonstrate its commitment to closing the gap between the rich and the poor, empowering the poorest of the poor, and improving human capital development in the country. This informed the Memorandum of Understanding signed by the federal government in collaboration with the Benue State Government since 2016 to disburse money to the poorest of the poor, especially in the rural areas, to change their livelihood. The training program is therefore aimed at inculcating new application strategies in the cash transfer facilitators to effectively carry out the mandate. The more people are identified, the more the number of beneficiaries in the state. You will agree with me that the process is complex, it's not easy, it's cumbersome. Moving from community to community, enabling community to identify the beneficiaries takes time. I've been encouraged to form financially active groups where so many have benefited from contribution schemes popularly called Adashi. A good number of them have started their own businesses, while others are into farming. They said the application is to automate data capture in the field as to minimize problems arising from implementation. The cash transfer program is to support beneficiaries for education. Since apologies for that abrupt uh, break. Okay, as a further step uh, towards ensuring the success of the National Anti Corruption Strategy Acting Plan, the federal government has inaugurated a committee that will monitor and evaluate the action plan. Minister of Justice Abubakar Balani performed the inauguration in Abuja. Femi Okewo reports. The National Anti-Corruption Strategy, which was validated on the 27th of April 2017 and an action plan developed and adopted in March this year, has five key pillars. They are preventive, public engagement, ethical reorientation, enforcement and sanction, and recovery and management of proceeds of crime. To fulfill the fourth pillar, which is enforcement and sanction, Effective monitoring is required from across all the strata of the society. It is this condition that the Minister of Justice said has been fulfilled through the composition of the 17-member committee. The monitoring of the national anti-corruption strategy implementation is to be achieved through three different levels. One, the monthly reporting and quarterly self-assessment within the anti-corruption, law enforcement and regulatory agencies, two, annual review of the progress of the implementation, three, annual review and reporting of the National Anti-Corruption Strategy Monitoring and Evaluation Committee. The Monitoring and Evaluation Committee also has as its mandate the full implementation of the strategy and the action plan. Secretariat and also the technical committee has worked assiduously in collaboration with uh, the rule of law. The committee is expected to be a standing committee with periodic review of its membership. In Abuja, Femi Okewu, NT News. Nigeria and South Africa are to further develop military cooperation through enhanced intelligence sharing to strengthen the armies of the two countries. This was the thrust of the visit of the South African Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Wendell Yam, visit to Nigeria, Army Headquarters, Abuja. This conference in Abuja, the South African Army Chief Wendell Yam acknowledged the remarkable role played by Nigerians towards the independence of South Africa and Nigerians' military effort in sterilizing the entire African continent. Army is a very experienced army which has established itself 
particularly in the Central African region, through the structures of ECOWAS, to ensure that there is peace which must allow the security of the people of the region, not only of your populous country. Nigeria's Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Burtai, who highlighted ongoing efforts and innovation to develop Nigerian Army in its quest to be self-reliant in hard and software production, said the South African military assisted in training some Nigerian special forces. In several of your training exercises, exercise Amani Africa is one of them, Airborne Africa is another, and uh, we will continue to participate in these friendly exercises for us to interact and make our militaries, our armies understand each other so that they can address our contemporary African issues professionally together. Defence correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the visiting South African Chief of Army Staff is expected to visit other military formations. Buhari campaign organization Lagos Air School inaugurated. Details of these and other stories from our Lagos Zone with Jennifer as our guide. Hello, Jennifer. Hello, Miriam. Welcome to Lagos. The federal government says the prioritization of securing the nation's maritime domain remains critical to boosting international trades and global economy. Minister of Defense Mansur Dan Ali stated this at the inauguration of 16 new vessels for the Nigerian Navy in Lagos. Dotun Oguyemi has the details. The 16 vessels made up of two fast patrol craft, four inshore patrol craft and 10 rigid haul inflatable boats are additions to the over 200 assorted boats inducted into the Nigerian Navy fleet in the last two years. Built in France, both 110 MK2 ships were christened NNS Unguru and NNS Ekulu, while the four 72 MK2 patrol craft are NNS Gongola, NNS Osei, NNS Calabar, and NNS Shiroro. Minister of Defense Mansour Dan Ali appreciated the efforts of the military in tackling security challenges, especially the protection of the maritime domain. It is my sincere hope that these new additions to the fleet will boost the operational capability of the Nigerian Navy, especially in the effort to stamp out various threats prevalent in our maritime environment. The Chief of Naval Staff disclosed that more vessels will be commissioned as part of the Navy's resolve to effectively protect the oceans and seabed, which are critical to the national economy. I assure you that they will further help to make life more difficult for the criminals in our maritime space. After receiving their commissioning warrants, the captains led crew members on board, signifying their readiness to be deployed. Commissioned and ready for duty, these vessels have been inducted into the Nigerian Navy fleet to further boost its capabilities to tackle and checkmate illegal activities on the nation's waterways. In Lagos, Dotun Ogunyemi, NTA News. Now, executive members of the Buhari campaign organization, Lagos State Council, have been challenged to consider their nominations as call to national duty. The national coordinator of the group, Alhaji Danladi Basali, stated this at the inauguration of executive members of the Lagos State Local Lagos State Local Government Council, Tunde Saiki reports. The Buhari Campaign Organization, BCO, is a unit made up of members of the All Progressive Congress who are championing the re-election of President Muhammadu Buhari in the 2019 elections. It classes itself as a grassroots organization that preaches the transformation activity of the current administration to the people to achieve its primary objective, the group as members in all the states of the Federation. The inauguration of the new executive members of the 20 local government areas of Lagos State is to further strengthen their stronghold in the ASIS. The truth is we wanted to go down to the grassroots, to mobilize the grassroots, to encourage them to be part of the empowerment program of Mr. President. The National Liaison Officer of the Bus Conductors Association of Nigeria of the Buari Campaign Organization, Prince Israel Adeshola, called on members to brace up for the challenges ahead by mobilizing Nigerians irrespective of party affiliation, to close ranks and return President Muhammadu Buhari 
to office in order for him to consolidate on the change mantra. Is that we should join the change tr uh, train, which was already joined. Representatives of the new executive members described the appointment as a call to duty, vowing not to disappoint the people. The ambassador to make sure that we synthesize our people, also to mobilize our people so that they will benefit from it. Not like some kind of usual political lies, they will speak and they will not do. Officials of the organization revealed that more state chapters will be inaugurated in the next few weeks. In Lagos, Tunde Saiki, NTA News. Time now to join Mina Okwabase in our Potakot Network Center for stories making the rounds in that region. Mina, over to you. Thank you, Jennifer. Good afternoon and welcome to Port Harcourt. The All Progressives Congress APC says River State will witness a new round of development and economic prosperity when the party is elected to run the affairs of the state in 2019. State Party Chairman Ojukai Flaga Makri gave the assurance at a rally in Opobo where new defectors, new defectors joined the party. Kinsley Amajiri reports. The Ojukai Flaga Makri led APC in River State has been traversing the state to receive new members into its fold. This time it was at a rally in Opobo Town where members of the opposition PDP defected to the APC. The chairman gave assurance that APC will take over governance in River State. As the chairman of this party, I can tell you what the people are saying. They are saying APC come and rescue River State. Some leaders of the DCAMPs gave assurance that they were poised to rewriting the history at the time they are desirous of change in leadership. We who have come back, we strongly believe on what Andrea Mechi is saying about who is to be our next governor. Therefore, for those of us who have decided that they want to join the winning boat, we embrace you with open hands. Stakeholders insist that the APC is on a rescue mission pledging to support the efforts of the Minister of Transportation and Port Harcourt, Kingsley Amajiri. NTA News. 2,157 graduates of various tertiary institutions posted to River State have subscribed to the one-year NYSS scheme. Emmanuel and Lene covered the swearing ceremony of the 2018 Batch B Stream 2 core members held at the permanent orientation camp Noa Bamtai, local government area. That was the oath of allegiance administered on the 2018 Batch B Stream 2 core members by Honorable Justice Godwin Olo, River State Governor represented by the Permanent Secretary, SSG's office, Shidi Adele, charged them to shun antisocial behaviors and be guided by the motto of the scheme. I wish to reiterate here that my administration will spare no resources in ensuring that the security of your lives and pro property during this orientation to the service year is very much guaranteed. NYSC State Coordinator Chiwendu Chuku thanked the state government for making welfare of core members a priority. He called on employers of core members to follow suit. The orientation program marks a very important segment of the service year as it provides a platform for the physical, emotional, and psychological reconditioning of core members to enable them meet the challenges of the service here and beyond. The event featured display of military drills and signing of register. <laughs> In Port Harcourt, Emmanuel Lene, NTA News. And that's it from Port Harcourt. Nationwide continues with Miriam in Abuja after the break. Speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. 
under no conditions whatsoever should we tolerate or excuse or justify hate speech or hateful conduct of any kind, especially where such is illegal. There's no doubt that the resurgent push for separatism as well as the rising cases of ethnic and religious disharmony are all traceable to the growing phenomenon of hate speech. One nation bound in freedom Peace and unity Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. On Tuesday Live this week, Sino-Africa relations and the rest of the world comes under close examination. Plus, focus on the issue of national interest and rule of law. All the sides with relevant stakeholders and experts. Tuesday Live promises to be educative, informative and exciting. Don't miss it. For years, the NTA has been promoting science, technology, arts and crafts under the tagged name National Children's Expo. We are set with another edition as we gather children around Nigeria, junior category ages 6 to 12 and senior category ages 13 to 18. The theme for Expo 2018, achieving self-sufficiency in agriculture, meeting the challenges of security and exposition of alternative energy as pathways to national development. Date, October 21st to 25th, 2018. Venue, NTA Headquarters Arena, Area 11, Garki, Abuja. We are set to celebrate the best of innovation across the country. For more information, please call the following numbers. NTA ETV, promoting learning. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. The NTA Television College JOS wishes to inform candidates who applied to the college for 2018-2019 admission to degree and diploma programs that the aptitude test for selection of qualified candidates and the screening of JAM direct entry candidates will take place on Saturday, 8 September 2018. Venue, NTA Television College premises, Rayfield JOS. Time, 8 a.m. Candidates are expected to come along with original copies of academic certificates Certificates, statements of result, birth certificates, certificate of origin, and writing materials. Candidates are to pay a registration fee of 2,000 naira through NTA TV College Remitter platform. Please be informed that candidates that scored below 180 points in JAM UTME are not eligible to write the aptitude test. Management announcer. <laughs> Thanks for staying tuned. Now, the federal government, through the Victims Support Fund, has earmarked 1.5 billion naira for the execution of 31 projects in water supply, schools, and other projects in Yobe State. Vice Chairman, Victims Support Fund, Tijani Musa Tamsa, and the Executive Director of the fund said this while inaugurated the reconstructed public infrastructure in Biuyadi headquarters of Gubwe local government area of Yobe State. Mustafa Yusuf has details. The reconstruction of public infrastructures in Bunyadi, headquarters of Gujibwa local government, one of the worst hit council areas in Yobe State by the Boko Haram insurgency, was executed at the cost of 180 million naira by the victims of fund. Inaugurating the reconstructed structures jointly, and flagging off of distribution of 12,000 bags of MPK and urea fertilizers donated to IDPs and returnees by the Presidential Committee on the Northeast Initiative, Governor Ibrahim Gedam, and the Vice Chairman of the Victim Support Fund, Tijani Musa Timsa, 
said their collaboration has yielded positive results in assisting victims of Boko Haram insurgency in the state. This project is uh, about 30 in number, ranging from the local government secretariat to fire station to general hospital in Buniadi. This unprecedented turnout is a clear indication of their support to the policies and programs being implemented by our administration as well as for the post-insurgency, peace building and recovery efforts which are geared towards improving the standard and condition of living of the citizens. The executive director of the Victim Support Fund, Professor Sonde Ochoche, said apart from intervention in foster care, women empowerment, health, education, lots of distribution to vulnerable people and people affected by the Boko Haram insurgency in the Northeast, the fund has set aside 1.5 billion naira for the execution of the one project across the U.S. state. We are here to flag off some, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, animal breeding, the distribution of animals, as well as uh, the rain-fed agriculture and the dry season agriculture. All that is ongoing. The Victim Support Fund and the Presidential Committee on the Northeast Initiative have since their creation collaborating with the U.S. state government in the execution of project the establishment of local governance and the restoration of basic amenities to encourage more people to return to their communities as normalcy returns. In Damatru, Mustafa Yusuf Musa, NTA News. Now to agriculture. Undo State Gov uh, Governor Oluwaro Timia Keridolu has distributed 400,000 cocoa seedlings and 25,000 cashew seedlings to farmers in the state. The gesture is in a bid to revolutionize cocoa production in the state. Tony Batiri reports. According to investigation, Nigeria is currently the world's seventh largest producer of cocoa. And on those states, as at 2017 was rated the largest cocoa producing state, with an output capacity of about 77,000 tons per annum, and make up at least 30% of the total cocoa export in Nigeria. This formed the basis the Ondo state government is making efforts to sustain its pride of place in cocoa production, distributing the seedlings to the farmers from the 18 local government areas of the state. Ondo state governor, Mr. Oluwarosi Makre Dolu said the exercise is a partnership initiative of the state government and the federal government. We want a zero oil economy. That's why people are working on it in rice in order to uh, agricultural change. We cannot be dependent on oil eh, all our life. Some of the beneficiaries and stakeholders lauded the efforts of the state government, stressing that the step will bring employment to the teaming unemployed youth in Akure, Toin Batire. NTA News. Three strong elephants have been spotted grazing in communities' farmlands of the Gudo and Koko Beseliku government areas of Kebi State. Correspondent Usman Abdullahi Shehu reports that Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudo commended the untiring efforts of the communities for safeguarding the lives of the animals. The report. The three elephants believed to have come from the neighboring Republic of Benin were first sighted at a village called Zaria Kalakala in Kokobese local government last week before migrating to another village called Genten Fadama in Bagodo local government where they continue to graze. Some eyewitnesses said the elephants were later separated. Two are located across flooded river in rice field while the third elephant was seen grazing in the community Sogum and Millet farms. Farmers in the area said Despite the gentle nature of the wild animal, their worries isn't only the destruction of crops by the elephants, but that of the people trooping in to see the animals. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, who visited the area, extended President Muhammad Buhari's commendation to the communities for safeguarding the lives of the wildlife. The governor similarly encouraged the public to continue to provide useful information and support for the safe return of the animals to their permanent location. Governor Wagudu, however, strongly warned people against killing of wildlife. Stakeholders have been very, very helpful in safeguarding these elephants. There are three of them still within the territory in Kebi State. Kebi State government has promised to assist farmers that lost their crops by the elephants. In Brindin, Kebi, Usman Abdullahi Shehu, NTA News. 
Now to health matters. The Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adewale, says the federal government is undertaking a health sector reform that will enhance universal access of the Nigerian public to health care. He said this at the National Executive Council Meeting Association in Ushobu. Olabode Arewa reports that the focus of medical practitioners at the meeting is to strategize on reviving primary health care. Statistics show that Nigeria has one doctor attending to at least 4,000 patients working in poorly equipped health centers with poor remuneration. These poor indices prompted the Nigerian Medical Association to take another look at how well the health sector has served Nigerians. Their National Executive Council meeting address quackery in medical practice, implementing the National Health Act of 2014, reviewing the National Health Insurance Scheme for more efficiency. Each hospital, each clinic, each promoting group should have a standard, a basic minimum. Health Minister Professor Isaac Adewale, represented by Dr. Ebenezer Ajayi, said government was implementing a multi-sector approach to achieving efficient, low-cost health care for the vulnerable. The program, we are addressing the purchases and focus on resources. President of the Nigerian Medical Association, Dr. Adeda Yofaduile, said since the National Policy on Health Care was promulgated in 1978, it was yet to meet its objectives. Registrar, Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, Dr. Tajine Sanusi, said the fight against quackery in medical practice would be intensified. Participants also agreed to work in harmony with other health professionals to bring global best practices to bear on healthcare delivery in Ushubo Labodewa, NTA News. National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, accesses Nigerian Army Disaster Response Unit in Katsina. Let's join Rukaya in our Kaduna Network Center for details of these and more from that zone. Hello. Miriam, and welcome to Kaduna Network Center. Worried by severe floods and speed of refugees due to activities of insurgents and militia groups which forced communities to flee their homes to internally displaced persons camps, the National Emergency Management Agency has assessed the disaster response unit at the 35th Battalion Nigerian Army Katana. Bashir Ibrahim Nababa completes the report. It has suffered high loss of human lives and properties due to floods at the onset of the 28th rainy season, regarded as the worst ever to have recorded unprecedented number of casualties in decades. In the wake of these disturbing incidences, the National Emergency Management Agency, in collaboration with the Ministry of Defense, embarked on assessment visit to the 35th Battalion Nigerian Army Kasana to ascertain its level of preparedness to emergencies. The Director General National Emergency Management Agency, Mustafa Yunusa Mehaja, who was represented by the Director Search and Rescue, NEMA, Air Komodo Akube Yamu, stated that the visit is in pursuance of the agency's template of ensuring effective and efficient disaster management in collaboration with the military and other security agencies participating in rescue operations in the event of disaster. The commanding officer, 35 Battalion Nigerian Army Kasana, Lieutenant Colonel Godwin Okodaso, revealed that the formation has designed a realistic disaster response plan that has taken into cognizance its available human and material resources. He, however, hinted that inadequate manpower, lack of earth-moving equipment, and non-conduct of seminars are some of the factors militating against operations of the unit. The Nigerian Army had established 32 disaster response units across its formation in Nigeria to provide aids to civil authorities in addition to its constitutional responsibility of defending the nation's territorial integrity. In Kazna, Bashir Ibrahim Nababa, NTA News. Kaduna State has recorded fresh registration of 537,848 voters and the continuous voter registration that ended on 31st of August 2018. Resident Electoral Commissioner of the Independent National Electoral Commission in Kaduna State, Abdullahi Adam Mukogama, stated this in a press briefing. Haman Jabani reports. The breakdown of the figure shows that out of the 537,872 registered voters, 
302,342 are male, while 235,532 are female. Collected permanent voter cards, 52,507, and uncollected stood at 269,787. Corrections were 29,179. Defest, 4,018. And loss, 17,298. The resident electoral commissioner, Abdullah Adamu, further said 9,622 cards are yet to be printed, and there was inter and intrastate transfer that stood at 27,763. But I'm sure our PVC will continue until a week before the general election in 2019. That he further explained that with the conclusion of the continuous voter registration, there will be display hearing of claims and objections from Tuesday, 4th September 2018 to 8th September 2018 in all INEC offices across the state. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide coming to you on the network service of the NTA. There will be more stories after this timeout as I hand you back to Miriam in Abuja for continuation of more stories. Film Festival 2018 Abuja. Theme, a kiving for creativity. Date, December 1st to 7th, 2018. Featuring film screenings, master classes, special tributes, NFC annual film lecture, NFC annual essay competition awards, special national and state days, lifetime achievement awards, and Zuma Film Festival 2018 awards. Submission of entries for non-competition, competition and screening is ongoing and closes September 30th, 2018. All entries should be forwarded to the festival director, Zuma Film Festival Nigerian Film Corporation headquarters in Jaws and or its zonal offices in Abia, Lagos, Kano, Asaba, Yuna and Abuja or through the Film Freeway online platform www.filmfreeway.com For further inquiries call 0033146842 or 0063390420 or visit the website www.zoomafilmfirst.gov.ng Zuma Film Festival 2018, December 1st to 7th, Abuja, Nigerians for most Do you have the um, Java map? Yes, and a black. Yes, sir. Black or white? Yamala. Have I ever eaten white Yamala here before? Sorry, sir. Give me a mala and a mala. Do you have dodo? The doctor grab. Good. Let me have some dodo. I want you to put the meat in the bowl. Shaki. Suku. A body. I like my edo to be very tender. You have stockfish? Yes, sir. Good. Let's have some stockfish. And the catfish. My favorite. Every year. No eggs. I would like six boiled eggs. No eggs. Catfish would do. And then rice. Rice and then some salmon. Do you have a guru? When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin. NTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. Thanks for staying tuned. Now, the need for voter education on the specifics and mechanisms of electoral process, as well as citizens' rights and responsibilities in electoral process, has been stressed. The Kwara State Electoral Commissioner Garuba Atahiro stated this at an interagency advisory committee meeting held in Ilori. Deborah Agbola completes the report.
Malam Atairo said the committee is constituted because INEC needs the involvement of other agencies to realize our objective of effective mobilization and education of voters ahead of the 2019 general elections. The resident electoral commissioner enumerated some of the rules of the committee. Standardize and streamline voters' education messages and materials to ensure the participation of marginalized groups. To pull our efforts together so as to optimize the effectiveness of voters' educational campaign. He reminded the people of Kwara that the closing date for continuous voter registration still stands at 31st of August, while collection of the voter card continues till a week to the 2019 general elections. Some of the stakeholders comment. Please, we are begging you that PVC, apart from voting, you can use it to identify yourself anywhere. Our prayer is that I next to speak to us at least two weeks. Members of the advisory committee are drawn from the media organization in the state, professional bodies, and traditional institutions. Debra Agola, NTA News. Eligible voters are coming in the numbers to the various legal government offices of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Oshun State to beat the Sunday deadline for collection of permanent voter cards, PVC. Olabode Arewa reports that the registration of voters had long been stopped in the state for the governorship elections slated for September 22nd. The eagerness of the electorate to fully partake in the processes leading to the September 22 election was evident as they pick up their permanent voter cards at the various INEC local government offices in Ocean State. Well, the experience was smooth and it was fast. The Independent National Electoral Commission INEC compiled an electronic register of 1,682,495 voters out of 1,668,524 permanent voter cards ready for collection. About 1,152,751 of them had been collected. INEC has taken collection of the PVCs to the world level. It shows very negative. We touch it, but then not to the extent that I want to have not to achieve. There are going to be issues that we have to very seriously at this issue of vote by your PVC and that will empower you. That is your power. That is your civic duty. You must go out, collect your PVC and use it wisely to elect credible and uh, the best of leaders. A breakdown of registered voters in Oshun showed that women have the highest proportion with INEC counting on the cooperation of all players in the political process to ensure a each free September 22, Oshun governorship election. The influence of technology in the coming Oshun governorship election is not in doubt, as the Independent National Electoral Commission is deploying a plethora of technological devices to ensure the integrity of the process. In Oshubo Labodaiwa, NTA News. The Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, has announced 25% road crashes reduction during the last festive period. The Corps Marshal Boboye Oyeyemi uh, confirmed this at the quarterly strategy session of commanding officers of the Corps in Abuja. Oyeyemi Ajayi has the details. The quarterly, strate the quarterly strategy session of the commanding officers of the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, is to review activities of the Corps as well as issues facing the Corps and provide solutions. The Nigerian Road Safety Strategy, retention of the integrity of the Nigerian driver's license, ease of doing business, rescue and recovery operation in a democratic society with professionalism were major issues on the front burner. The board chairman, FRSC, Karim Mohammed, emphasized the need for better reward and commendation for officials who have distinguished themselves in the line of duty while condemning any act of indiscipline among officers. Unfortunately, in most of our institutions in Nigeria, is the issue of punishment. The issue of reward is forgotten, when actually the reward is the most important thing. Because when you reward people, you find that even the indiscipline will be reduced. 
Why? Because they understand that they are appreciated, and once you are appreciated, you give the best you can in any, to any organization. We have open more offices, uh, I call them outposts, so at strategic locations, and before the end of the year, two more will be open up. And uh, with the capital projects coming on stream in a few weeks' time, I believe we, before the end of the year, we should be able to inject about 150 patrol vehicles more to strengthen, including ambulances, patrol bikes, and uh, recovery vehicles. And with this, we should be able to, I believe, with this about months, every year now we've been improving. The government has been giving what it takes to do this work. Because Marshall reiterated that the Corps will remain committed to the nation and international development goals, which includes the Nigeria Economic Recovery and Growth Plan 2017 to 2020. In Abuja, Oye Yemi NT News. A national tennis championship started in Abuja on Monday in, Abu in Abuja with Nigeria last at the just concluded All Africa Golf Challenge competition in Ghana. Amazi Marcus has more on sports update. 81 tennis players comprising 43 men and 38 women weekend progressed to the main draw of the Maiden Vamp National Senior Tennis Championship at the Package B section of the Abuja National Stadium. Competition in the main draw commenced on Monday to end on Sunday, and it is in partnership with the Nigeria Tennis Federation to improve the performance of tennis players. Meanwhile, golf stakeholders in Nigeria want a review of the selection process for Nigeria's representatives at the biennial All-Africa Challenge Trophy in view of the country's unimpressive performance in the event. At the just-concluded competition in Accra, Ghana, Nigeria, represented by the trio of Evelyn Oyomi, Rita Izoje, and Amina Wilfred, placed ninth a position the country has been attaining in the last six years. South Africa placed first, having returned a gross of 469 in 54 holes, followed by Tanzania and Kenya. This result has proved that we need to go back to the drawing board and start all over again. Go back to the academies, try to bring up young ones. In a related development, Yahaya Shehu has described his victory at the 2018 Junior Tiger Golf Championship at the Parkland Golf Resort Club Abuja as a motivation that would spur him to academic greatness and become a professional golfer. The 15-year-old grows 57 on the par 3 mini golf course to emerge overall champion. I really improved this year because I had a pro that taught me for a very long time. Organizers who were joined by the Director of Grassroots Sports Development Department in the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development at Demola Array called for more sponsorship of junior golf competitions. With sports update, Amanzi Marcus, NTA News. Well, let's shift our gaze now, shall we, to weather forecast. Well, that's our package on NTA Nationwide. Thanks for watching. I am Miriam Akbata. So, you know, say, if you say I'm the superstar, but for me, the real superstars are those people where they go vote for the candidate of their choice without violence. So, for these upcoming elections, be my superstar. Vote. No fights. No violence. Because the election will be won. I am Adeola Omokide. 
and the program you're watching is what's real. Keep it big to us. Fans, they don't understand the rules or the laws of the game. Hello and welcome to that program of yours on the NTA Sports Channel, Knowing Golf. Thanks for joining us on another edition of Sports Guest on the ATA. My name is Kenem Ema Abodeke. Welcome indeed to Saturday Sports Arena on the ATA Sports 24. It will not be if you continue to just have these vague means of saying things that the artists are only use. Elite Service, a program designed to bring you up to speed with happenings in Nigeria Football League. 